to uh, I'm sorry being be heard. We have a few technical difficulties. Um, and and uh, we're just uh, kind of scrambling to make sure that we get this started on time. Um, we're very thankful that you can join us for this second edition of Boosts from the Bible. And uh, and uh, we thank Tim Franklin for helping us with this and Leslie French. Why don't we get started? Of course, we're still hunkering down during this coronavirus time. Um, and uh, I need to contact <laughs> Leslie a little bit and let her know. Now, this is really live. And uh, whereas uh, we, we know that we all need uh, a boost from our Creator, the God who is loved during this crisis, and last Thursday, we looked at Philippians 4, verses 4 through 14 for our inspiration. And um, there we learned from Paul that he had, through faith, learned the secret, the great secret of having plenty and going without. He proclaimed that he and other Christians can handle and can get through all things through Christ who strengthens him and you and me. Now this Thursday, we are looking at one of my favorite sections of the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 18 through 38. And I want to go over that with you. And first, let me read it for you. Again, with Apostle Paul, he writes the following to you and me. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. And uh, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly while we await for while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Who fo hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Paul writes now, likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But, we, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs that are too deep for words. And God who searches the spirit knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? 
Who will make any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the, the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. And Paul ends this way. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There ends the reading. You know, I have heard these wonderful words many times, and maybe you have heard these words and read these words many wonderful times. But we have heard, but I have to, I have to ask you a question. Have we heard these words so often that maybe sometimes we don't let them sink way down into the core of our being? Do we, due to the coronavirus or due to other problems, segregate our fears on the one side versus the word of God on the other, and never the twain shall meet? Not on purpose, but because we have become so used to those words, perhaps. So let's look at this passage more deeply. We start off with boom, a phrase that directly applies to our situation. I consider, Paul says, that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Wow. And why do I say wow? Because so often we have a voice inside of us telling us um, like the character of Henny Penny in that famous children's story. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Disaster is up ahead. Now notice when the Apostle Paul mentions the sufferings of this present time, Paul is not saying that we are just making up suffering or that suffering doesn't exist. No. He makes it clear that suffering is really suffering in this world. But what Paul is also saying is that no matter the suffering, it isn't nearly as bad as the eternity of good that we will experience in eternal life. The promise of heaven is one of the most important things that we can think of and meditate, of, meditate upon. Now, last week in Philippians 4, Paul wrote, think about these things. And he had a whole list. He said, whatever is just, whatever is pure, uh, whatever is pleasing, commendable, uh, anything excellent or worthy of praise. Think about those kinds of things, he said, in tough times. And let me tell you, we all have experienced being around great people, experiencing sweet memories, wonderful gifts that we have received or given, special holiday moments, amazing aha moments, uh, impressive things that we've seen being done by various human beings, and really super conditions in living every day that we often take for granted. All these wonderful things that we have received and seen and been a part of, Paul tells us to think about those things. In addition to the promise of eternal life that Jesus has won for you and for me. And he won it through his death and resurrection for us. Now that's one thing we can do when we suffer. We can meditate on those good things. 
And this is more than just a little list of blessings like that wonderful song in The Sound of Music. Uh, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. It's really thinking of something in more depth, some event you went through, practically anything. And upon reflection saying, God, help me to take one or two or three moments there and add that to my list of the great things that you have so graciously given to me that I can always think about. Let me pick, a, pick out another um, part of Romans 8, verses 24 and 25. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, he says. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I've sometimes had trouble grasping what hope is and why it's so important, but it's really about the future and really having confidence in the future. And that helps us to be patient, as Paul says. You know, our selfish side doesn't really believe in that kind of hope, especially when it seems the sky is falling. I have a friend who keeps telling me that because of all that has been happening the last several weeks, the world economy is falling, coming to a dead end. And I respond by telling him that, that all of those things, the economy and so on, will come back someday. And he comes right back and says, well, what day? And I said, I don't know what day. And he's not very happy with that answer. It isn't good enough for him, perhaps because he doesn't want to rely on hope or on the God of hope. But there is a Holy Spirit inside of you that knows and is telling you that this too shall pass. And in the meantime, we can grow spiritually and build ourselves up. In the meantime, we can exercise our bodies, our minds, our hearts, and our, our souls. The great German uh, Lutheran pastor and author Dietrich Bonhoeffer fled Nazi Germany in the late 1930s. He came to America. Uh, he had been undergoing persecution um, from the Nazis, and that's why he fled. But then within months of being in America, he changed his mind saying, I have come to the conclusion that I made a mistake in coming to America. I must live through this difficult period in our national history with the people of Germany. I will have no right, he said, to participate in the reconstruction of Christian life in Germany after the war if I do not share now the trials of this time with my people. You see, Bonhoeffer had hope for the world after the cataclysm of World War II was over. And he knew that he wanted to go back to Germany right away to help those suffering right then and there until the great struggle was over. You and I, we too are called in this cataclysm to do our part, to stay in touch, to find ways to help others and to deeply pray for others, all empowered by hope in our future. Knowing as we read in verse 28 today that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's deep purpose. A purpose which always points us to the future and uh, empowered by a real vibrant hope, a hope that the spirit implants deep within us that we may live on that hope through these next days and weeks. Speaking of the spirit, we often find it hard to pray in tough times. Sometimes we don't know the right words 
and are afraid we haven't spent enough time in prayer against the virus and for other people, as well as for ourselves. But it, please remember the powerful verse 20, 26 in Romans 8. This verse definitely gives us all a boost. Likewise, we read, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought to, but that very Spirit intercedes to God with sighs, sighs too deep for words. Bruce Epperly has written concerning prayer. Our prayers may play a role in protecting us, our loved ones, and the planet. This isn't magic nor some form of miracle, he says, but when we pray, we create fields of force, fields of force that bring healing and hope to the world. Prayers add to the well-being of others in the midst of the other factors shaping their lives. Our prayers, he concludes, may even help God be more present in this world. Perhaps something rotten happened to you lately. Connected to the virus, maybe, or maybe not. And you know, uh, with all that's going on around us, with all the stress and tension we're having to endure, it's easy to, to get on each other. And as it rains, the news rains down on upon us day after day after day. But remember this when you're trying to get over that rotten time. I'm going to share with you Romans 8, verse 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now, the answer to all those things is no, no. No, nothing will separate us from God's love in Christ. Nothing. Not the hardships we are enduring, some enduring more than others. Not the distress we sometimes feel. Not the peril, especially I think of health um, nurses and doctors. The peril that some are going through and, and others are concerned about them going through. Not the famine, the isolation of not physically being with each other. None of those things, Paul says today to us, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now let's think about that. I'll leave you with one more boost from the Bible. It's at the end of this glorious chapter 8 of the book of Romans. And all I need to do is recite it, but for you, I want to sing it. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present like the coronavirus, nor things to come like economic recession, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us. And join us again next Thursday at noon for another round of Boosts from the Bible. God be with you.